and question. Morning. So, lesson seventeen. So we're on chapter seven, which is solving differential equations that can't be solved explicitly in terms of elementary functions, uh, but you can solve by using power series. And section seven point one is an introduction or really a review of power series. And 7.2 is the beginning of learning how to solve the differential equation. So I'm happy to go over homework problems. There are some homework problems from 7.1 and homework problems from 7.2. So in section 7.1, are there problems you would like me to do? Problem 17. And 13. Okay, let me take a look. That's on page 319. Let me pull it up. Okay. So section 7.1, number 17. And for number 17, we have a differential equation, x squared y double prime plus 2xy prime minus 3xy. Well, sorry, it's not even a differential equation. Um, we have this expression, and y is going to be a power series. y is a function of x. It's a power series, n goes from zero to infinity, a sub n, x minus two to the n. So on the number line, here's the number two, and we're looking at a power series which is centered at the point two. So this power series is going to converge on some interval around two. But in any case, given a power series, this is the power series, we want to um, express this as a power series, right? So let's see, so y is summation n goes from zero to infinity, a sub n, x minus two to the n. So y prime, if you differentiate, you're allowed to differentiate term by term. And the derivative of x minus two to the n, the a n is a constant, is n x minus two to the n minus one. And y double prime, you differentiate again, the derivative of x minus two to the n minus one is n minus one x minus two to the n minus two. So we have n n minus one, a sub n, x minus two to the n minus two, right? Any questions about this so far? But we have x squared y double prime. So x squared y double prime, that's x squared times this sum. And you can multiply x squared by x times x minus two to a power exactly, because these are powers of x minus two. So it would be good to somehow try to write, well, actually, before I do that, um, this is maybe the hardest term. Uh, let me start at the other end. So this is okay but I'm not gonna use this yet. I have minus three xy. What is xy? So xy is x times summation n goes from zero to infinity a n x minus two to the n, okay? And I'm going to be clever. I'm going to write x 
as two plus x minus two. Right. So if you study the text, you'll see this is a technique or a trick or a method already used in the text because I want to have powers of x minus two. So I write this to so x is two plus x minus two times summation a n x minus two to the n. And I just distribute across, this is two times summation a n x minus two to the n. Again, all of these sums are from zero to infinity plus x minus two times summation a n x minus two a n x minus summation over n from zero to infinity a n x minus two to the n. And this is two times summation and goes from zero to infinity a n x minus two to the n plus summation n goes from zero to infinity a n and x minus two times x minus two to the n is x minus two to the n plus one. All right. So I need to stop for a minute so you can see what I did. And if you just look and see what I did, you won't learn anything. What you have to do is take a piece of paper and a pencil and actually write this down step by step and understand what's going on. So let's pause for a minute or a few seconds at least, while you do that. Y is this series, and I'm multiplying it by X. But because I want everything in terms of X minus two, I write X as two plus X minus two, which is certainly true. So I have this. And then I want to move the index of summation. I want to shift the index of summation. So this is two summation n goes from zero to infinity, a n x minus two to the n. And if I move the index of summation down by one, if I replace n by n minus one, I get summation a sub n minus one, x minus two to the n, n goes from one to infinity. You see, if you look at this series, what are the first two terms you get? a zero x minus two plus a one x minus two squared and so on. If I look at this series, starting with n equal one, the first term is a zero x minus two, a one x minus two squared. It's exactly the same thing. So, so I shifted the index of summation. So I'm still going on. So I still have, so I have only powers of x minus two to the n. And so what I've ended up with is that when y is summation, a n x minus two to the n, n goes from zero to infinity, x times y is this. Here, when n is zero, I get the term two a zero. And then, and going from one to infinity, this is two a n plus a sub n minus one, just adding up the series, x minus two to the n. So x y is equal to this. Okay, other questions? And we apply the same technique for dealing with x, y prime. So y prime is summation n a sub n x minus two to the n minus one and goes from zero to infinity. So x, y prime is x times this. And again, I write x as two plus x minus two. And then I distribute this across. I have 
two summation n goes from zero to infinity n a sub n x minus two to the n plus I multiply this series by x minus two. So x minus two times x minus two to the n minus one. I get x minus two to the n. <coughs> and again, uh, sorry, this should be n minus one. And again, I need to shift this series. So I want x minus two to the n. So this is two. Summation, if I replace n by n plus one, n plus one, a sub n plus one, x minus two to the n, n goes from zero to infinity. Here, n really goes, when n is zero, this term is zero. So this is really going from one to infinity. And when n is equal to one, the first term is simply a one. And here, when n is zero, the first term is a one. Everything works out plus this. <clears throat> so when I add this all up, what do I get? I get summation n goes from zero to infinity, something times x minus two to the n, and the coefficient of x minus two to the n is two, n plus one, a n plus one, plus n a sub n. And that's x, y prime. Right. Questions about this? This is technique in calculus. And then our last term that we have to calculate is x squared y double prime. So we want to somehow write x squared as sums of powers of x minus 2. So how can we do that? So let me do a little sort of trick, if you like. Um, if I had x plus 2 and I squared it, I would get x squared plus 4x plus 4. So if I, let, let's say y, y plus two squared is y squared plus four y plus four. Actually, let me do it different, just to use a different letter. t plus two squared, so it doesn't, we don't get confused with our function y, is t squared plus four t plus four. And suppose we let t equal x minus two. Then if I let t equal x minus two, t plus two is x. So x squared is x minus two squared plus four times x minus two plus four. And you can check if you square this, you get x squared minus four x plus four x plus four minus eight plus four, everything. This is exactly what it is. So we have a, you might call it a high school algebra identity, x squared is x minus two squared plus four times x minus two plus four. And y double prime is summation n, n minus one, a sub n, x minus two to the n minus two, and goes from zero to infinity, though when n is zero, this is zero, and when n is one, this is zero. So x squared y double prime is equal to this, x minus two squared plus four x minus two plus four, 
times summation n, n minus one, a sub n, x minus two to the n minus two, and goes from zero to infinity. And now we just distribute across, we'll get three power series. We multiply this series by this, by this, and by this. When we multiply by x minus two squared, I get summation n goes from zero to infinity, n, n minus one, a sub n, x minus two to the n minus two plus two, n minus two to the n, plus summation n goes from zero to infinity. I multiply by four x minus two, I get four n, n plus one, a sub n, x minus two, I multiply this by x minus two, I get x minus one, n minus one. And then the last term, summation, n goes from zero to infinity, four n, n minus one, oops, should be n minus one, I believe, four n, n minus one, a sub n, x minus two to the n minus two. Because with this term, all I'm doing is multiplying every coefficient by four. So I wanna stop for a minute and take a look at this and just sort of check what I've done. <clears throat> so I had stopped recording. Um, Did we get all of the solution to the first problem, number 17? Yes, we did. Okay. Um, but I'm not going to repeat this because it's another 20 minutes. And, uh, but we'll be doing more and more calculations with power series. Uh, every problem we do today and Wednesday and next week is going to be a calculation with power series. I would thank you for pointing out that I had not unpause the recording. No Sorry. problem. Okay, so let's review a little bit. In chapter five, we look at second order linear ordinary differential equations. And let's just restrict ourselves to the homogeneous case. So that's an equation of the form y double prime plus p of x y prime plus q of x y equals zero. And we have an initial value problem. Find the solution y such that y at x naught has some value a zero and y prime at x naught has some value a1. So we wanna find the solution of the differential equation that at some point x naught satisfies these initial conditions. And if P of X, so this is the big theorem. If P of X and Q of X are continuous on an interval A, B containing X naught, then this differential equation, I'll call it star, then star, the addition, the differential equation with these initial conditions has a unique solution on this interval. So there exists a solution and the solution is unique. And if we had the equation in a slightly different form, suppose it was P zero of X, Y double prime plus P one of X, Y prime plus P two of X, Y equals zero. If P naught of X naught is not equal to zero, you can divide by it and you would have an equation of this form. And actually, 
we're not simply going to consider homogeneous equations, but we're going to make the additional <clears throat> very simplifying assumption that P0 of X, P1 of X, and P2 of X are polynomials. So they're not exponentials or logs or inverse trig functions or anything complicated. We have a differential equation of the second order, linear with polynomial coefficients. And polynomials are continuous on the whole line from minus infinity to infinity. If <clears throat> x naught is not a zero of this leading coefficient, p naught of x, then you can divide. Right? So you would divide by p naught of x naught. And you would be exactly in this situation <clears throat> where there would be some open interval containing x naught, where this initial value problem always has a unique solution. <clears throat> and we're going to look for solutions. So I, I, there's just some terminology. So x naught is called a re, is called a regular point. If P naught of X naught is not zero. So if you have a regular point, you know you can divide <clears throat> and there will always be a solution. And this is called a singular point, they're bad. If P naught of X naught is equal to zero, because then you can't divide. <clears throat> and we're just going to, for now, next week we'll look at singular points, but now we're only going to consider regular points. So that means that you can divide by P naught of X, you get coefficients of Y prime and Y that are continuous on some interval, and there's going to be a solution. And there's a theorem which says, we're not going to prove it because that's much more advanced analysis, that if you have a regular point, you can always find a solution of the differential equation that satisfies your initial condition and is a power series in X minus X naught. So we're going to be looking at the following situation, P zero of X or the following types of differential equations. P0 of x, y double prime, plus P1 of x, y prime, plus P2 of x, y equals zero. P0, P1, P2 are polynomials. P0 of x0 is not zero. And we look for a solution, y of x, equal summation a sub n x minus x naught to the n, n goes from zero to infinity. And the fundamental theorem for dealing with an equation of this type at a regular singular point is, there's always a unique solution as a power series. By the way, if you write this power series out, what does this look like? a zero plus a one x minus x zero, plus a2 x minus x zero squared and so forth. So if you evaluate y at x zero, all of these terms are zero, you just get a naught. So the constant term of your power series is the value of the function at x naught. If you differentiate y prime of x, you get summation n a n x minus x naught to the n minus one. So this is one A one plus two A two X minus X naught squared plus three A three X minus X naught, sorry, X minus X naught to the first power. When N is three, this is X minus X naught squared and so forth. And Y prime at X naught, all these terms disappear when you let X equal X naught, you're just left with this as A one. 
So if you're looking for, if you have an initial value problem at X naught and you have a power series solution, the power series and powers of X minus X naught, the constant term of the power series is the initial value of Y at X naught. And the linear term, A1, the first, the next coefficient is the value of the derivative at X naught. So everything we're doing says that our equations can always be solved in power series. It's a question of skill and dealing with some recurrence relation. So let's take a look at section 7.2. On page 321, theorem 7.2.1 simply repeats what I just said, that the existence theorem for power series. And the first example I actually worked out last week. So let's look at another example. One that is not necessarily so... Uh, it's well known. Um, let me just recall summation and product notation. So summation notation, you certainly know because we use it constantly. If you have summation, um, let's say B sub J, J goes from R to S. This is BR plus BR plus one plus BR plus two up to B sub S. So long as S is at least R. And this is zero if S is less than R because there's nothing to add. Like if you had summation from J going from five to two, that's zero because you can't start at five and keep adding one and getting to two, right? So this you certainly know, you've been dealing with summation notation for a long time. And there's also product notation. If you have product, this is a capital letter, Greek letter pi, say J goes from R to S, B sub J, so long as S is at least R, this is a product, BR, BR plus one, BR plus two, up to B sub S. But if it happens that S is less than R, then the convention is this is one, it's not zero, it's one. So if you had, for example, product of um, J squared, J goes from three to five, this would be, Three squared, four squared, five squared, the product of those numbers. And if you had the product of J squared, J goes from five to three, this is one, because three is less than five. Okay, any questions about that? So let's start with a new problem. Let me do an example from the book as always. Example, 7.2.2, find a power series in X. This means we're looking for a function Y, summation A N, and this is like X naught is equal to zero. So this is just X to the N. It's not X minus one to the N or X minus 17 to the N. This is a power series in X. 
for the general solution of the differential equation, one plus two x squared y double prime plus six x y prime plus two y equals zero. And sometimes we abbreviate this left-hand side as L of Y. So it's like, this is a function of Y. It's, it involves Y, Y prime, Y double prime. So this is just notation. L, Y is just shorthand for this. I don't have to keep writing it. All right. Now I'm going to go through this step by step and you have to stop me if there's any step that's not clear. This is y. So y prime is summation n a n x to the n minus one from one to infinity. And y double prime is summation n n minus one a sub n x to the n minus two and goes from two to infinity. Differentiate this term by term once, I get this. Differentiate this term by term twice, I get this. So Ly is one plus two x squared times this series. plus six x y prime. So that's six x times this series. Plus two times this series, two y. So let me distribute this across. One times this. Plus two X squared times this. So I multiply this by two X squared, two in N minus one, A sub N. And x to the n minus two times x squared is x to the n plus six x times this. Six n a n and x times x to the n minus one is x to the n plus two times this. That's what I get. So I have this series. And these are all series in X to the N. Let's see here, I could start with zero, N equals zero. Of course, it's zero and one, this is still zero. And here it's zero, this is zero. So I could start this at zero. So I can write this as summation and goes from zero to infinity. Two N, N minus one A N plus six N A N plus two A N X to the N. Let me shift the index here. So I'm going from zero to infinity. So I can replace n by n plus two. n plus two, n plus one, a n plus two x to the n plus summation n goes from zero to infinity. 
what do I have here? I have something times a n. This is 2n squared minus 2n plus 6n plus 2, which is 2n squared plus 4n plus 2, which is 2 times n squared plus 2n plus 1. And this is n plus 1 squared. So this is 2n plus 1 squared a sub n x to the n. So what I have is that Ly is equal to summation n goes from zero to infinity. I have n plus two, n plus one, a n plus two plus two a n plus two n plus one squared a n. That's the coefficient of x to the n. And I want to find the solution of the differential equation with all this is equal to zero. And the only time a power series is zero, power zero is zero if and only if every one of the coefficients is zero. So, and so the coefficients have to satisfy the relation that n plus two, n plus one, a n plus two, plus two, n plus one squared a n is equal to zero for all n. Or another way of saying that is n plus two, n plus one, a n plus two is equal to minus two, n plus one squared a n for all n. Or if I divide by n plus two, n plus one, I get that a n plus two, one of these n plus ones cancel, is minus. 2 n plus 1 over n plus 2 a n for all n. So the coefficients are defined by this recurrence. <clears throat> so once you have, so for any a 0, let that n equals 0, a 2 is minus. When n is zero, I get minus two, one over two, a zero. When n is four, I, when n is two, I'm just gonna look at even numbers now. A four is minus two, three over four, a two, which is minus two, 3 over 4, 1 over 2, a 0. When n is 4, I get a 6 is minus 2, 5 over 6, a 4, which is minus 2, 5 over 6 times a 4, five times three times one, six times four times two, a zero. And in fact, if you continue, you will see the pattern that for any even number, a sub two m, it's going to be equal to what? Let's see, um, this would be, some part of my arithmetic is wrong here. So let me just start this again. So this is the correct recursion. 
a n plus two is equal to minus two n plus one over n plus two a sub n. So let's work this out for n equals zero. A two is minus two one over two a zero which is the twos cancel minus one over one a zero. When n is two, a four is minus two, three over four a two, which is minus three over two a two, which is minus three over two times minus one over one, a zero, which is the minuses cancel, is one times three over one times two, a zero. When n is four, when n is four, I have a six is minus two, five over six, a four, which is minus five, the twos and two into six is three, a four is minus five over three times one times three over one times two, a zero, which is minus one times three times five over one times two times three, a zero. Let's do one more. When n is six, a eight is minus two, seven over eight, a six, which is minus seven over four, a six. That's minus seven over four times minus one times three times five, one times two times three, a zero. The minus is canceled, so I get one times three times five times seven over one times two times three times four, a zero. Of course, these denominators are just four, this is just four factorial. And if you continue, you'll see the pattern that a sub 2m is minus 1 to some power of m. Oops, this is plus minus 1 to the m, the product of the first m odd integers. over m factorial a zero. <clears throat> and you can work out a similar recursion for the odd coefficients. That is the technique of power series. Now, there is a certain um, special case of the special cases that we're dealing with where um, you can actually have a kind of a formula to write down the solution as a power series. in the following situation. So this is theorem 7.2.2. So again, we're looking at second order linear homogeneous differential ordinary differential equations with polynomial coefficients. And now this is uh, it's a special case, but one that comes up often in physical applications. You have a differential equation that looks like one plus some number alpha times x minus x naught squared, y double prime, plus beta times x minus x naught y prime, plus gamma y equals zero.
So the problem we just looked at was exactly of this type. The problem we just looked at, let me find it. The problem we just looked at was one plus two X squared, Y double prime, plus six X Y prime, plus two Y equals zero. So in this case, X naught is zero. We're finding a power series around zero. Alpha is two. Beta is six. Gamma is four. That's the problem we just did, which, which was a differential equation of this type. And this differential equation has a power series solution. Y equals summation a sub n x minus x naught to the n n goes from zero to infinity. Where the coefficients satisfy the recurrence relation So a recurrence relation is for a sequence of numbers is a formula where one number is completely determined by some preceding numbers. You have a formula for that. So in this case, a n plus two is going to be equal to minus some polynomial in n, which I will write down in a moment, over n plus two, n plus one, a sub n for all n greater than or equal to zero, where p of n is alpha n n minus one plus beta n plus gamma. So, and if you check the solution to the problem we just did, you'll see it is exactly of this form. But sometimes, even if you know the theorem, you have a problem and you somehow have to rewrite the problem so it's in the form to which this theorem applies. Okay, but this is the theorem and you have the book so I don't have to keep the theorem on the screen. So here is a problem. This is example 7.2.3. Find the power series in x minus 1.
with the general solution of the ordinary differential equation, two plus four X minus two X squared, Y double prime, minus 12 x minus one y prime minus 12 y equals zero. Right, so that's my differential equation. And I want a power series in x minus one. Now the theorem applies when I have an equation that's in the form one plus alpha x minus one squared y double prime plus beta x minus one y prime plus gamma times y. So this is almost in this form, but not completely. We have gamma equal minus 12 and beta equal minus 12. We both fit this form, but I have to write I have to find alpha so that two plus four X minus two X squared is something of the form one plus alpha times X minus one squared. <clears throat> so, I want to write two plus four X minus two X squared in the form one plus alpha times X minus one squared. So how can I find an X minus one squared in this? So you have to, unfortunately, really know some high school algebra or be able to play with this like high school algebra. This is two plus four X minus two X squared. Let me write this as, um, minus two times x squared minus two x minus one. Okay. I think this is right, minus two x squared plus four x plus two. So I wanna get an x minus one squared. This is like minus two x squared minus two x plus one minus two, right? Because one minus two is minus one, but this now is X minus one squared. So this is minus two times X minus one squared minus two. Or four minus two X minus one squared. So this can be written like this. So then my equation is exactly the same as replacing this by this, four minus two X minus one squared, Y double prime, minus 12 X minus one Y prime, minus 12 Y equals zero. So that's almost in this form except I have a four and not a one. So just divide through by four, divide by four. I get one minus a half X minus one squared Y double prime. I'm dividing by four minus three X minus one Y prime minus three Y equals zero. And now my differential equation is in exactly in the form that my theorem applies to with alpha equal to minus a half, beta equal to minus three and gamma equals minus three. Now in my theorem, I have a power series of this form where P of N is this polynomial. 
what is this polynomial for these values of alpha, beta, and gamma? This is equal to minus a half n, n minus one, minus three n, minus three. That's minus a half n squared, plus a half n, minus three, minus five halves n, minus three. Let's see, what is that? This is minus, I'll put everything over two, n squared plus five n plus six. That's minus a half n plus two, n plus three. So that gives me the solution to my problem. Again, there are a lot of algebraic details, but that's just what mathematics sometimes is, a lot of algebraic details. And line by line, step by step, fraction by fraction, this is worked out in example 7.2.3 on page 723. So what I, again, strongly encourage you to do is to look at this example and also the next one, example 7.2.4, and work on some of the homework problems from section 7.2. And, um, and I'll answer and work out whichever questions about problems you have on Wednesday. Um, so this is not a theoretical section of the book. This is really learning how to compute. And you might say, why do we have to do this? Why can't we just find the solution some other way? And the answer is, there is no other way. You can write down a solution to, to these equations in terms of anything like the functions that you know. The, uh, the only way you can find the solution is using power series. And if you truncate your power series after a number of terms, you actually just have a polynomial approximation to the solution, which is which can be highly accurate um, and very useful when you're trying to build a new airplane, design a bridge, or understand how the stock market is changing with changes in interest rates all the mathematical applications in finance, engineering, physics, and so forth. Any questions about this? Um, this is just a lot of work to do now. Okay. Uh, if not, then we are done for the morning. Seems like it's going to be a beautiful day, so hope everyone gets to enjoy the day. Okay. Bye, all. <clears throat> Bye.